Uh, Dan, uh, you attended on site in, in New York City. Got a great selfie, which that's all I care about, right? No, I know. I mean, I, I've heard some people say that, uh, you know, uh, the best research, research is healthy research. So we did it. I got one. Analysis, so. Yeah, you can check out my uh, run up. I, I had a, uh, a conversation with Pat Gelsinger uh, on the run up. Uh, you can read that article uh, on Forbes. Uh, and then, you know, I, I probably tweeted too much, but it was a very uh, provocative event. And I haven't done my summary, but but let me let me kind of net out uh, what they did. So they announced their first AIPC, uh, which is the Core Ultra. They introduced fifth generation uh, of Xeon, uh, same power envelope, a lot more AI uh, performance. And and by the way, I feel like this fifth gen uh, was the fourth gen that everybody wanted uh, in the first place. Okay. Um, but they had to get that fourth gen out. It was two two years late, uh, but but very quickly following up uh, with with uh, with fifth gen. So um, I think the AIPC Dan is going to have three chapters in this year, right? Uh, first phase is going to be kind of limited apps and spreading all the AI goodness across CPU, GPU, and a and a smaller NPU. And then maybe toward you know the, the middle of the year, we're going to see these giant NPUs, more apps. Uh, the OS will likely take better advantage of it. Easier for ISVs to, to target and characterize because it's going to be a fixed amount of NPU tops. And that is dramatically easier uh, to do than trying to size, literally in the Windows world, there could be 150 different configurations. Maybe there's 1500 different types of configurations that you need to fit in there. And then, you know, the third phase, right, which may, you know, might be at the very end, uh, might be, you know, into 2025 is where it's all going to come together. So people really need to look at this uh, as a as a continuum. Uh, Intel showed up uh, with, uh, you know, some pretty good tops uh, across CPU, GPU, and NPU. I think the NPU is like 11 uh, or or something like that. Uh, they had a couple uh, uh, videos of uh, customers that that were on stage, um, and and anyways, I think this is kind of the I'll call the beginning of shipping PCs uh, for for AI. Uh, a lot of and let's move to uh, fifth gen uh, Xeon that Santa Rivera brought out. Big performance, uh, big TCO claims. Uh, Signal sixty five didn't validate them uh, yet. But uh, those were some super uh, big numbers. And I like the fact that Google Cloud, IBM, and Zoom uh, testimonials were, were super supportive. Final thing, uh, Pat G came out, uh, sne- uh, snuck out a, a, a card uh, of Gaudi 3. And, you know, this essentially is going to do industrial grade data center AI training uh, and inference. Uh, it's an ASIC, which means uh, it's not a GPU. Uh, which means it's going to be higher efficient and higher performance for a set workload, uh, but harder uh, to program. And the program is built into a combination of the compiler uh, and, and the API. But listen, it's good to see Intel doing this. Uh, I'm going to you know, hold my breath until 2025 until we see an AI optimized GPU that uh, people still think, uh, you know, just by what they're buying, uh, with NVIDIA and, and now with AMD uh, for the data center. So I don't know. Uh, Intel is delivering uh, on their promises. They're not getting any credit for AI, even though their stock has gone up 63% uh, th- this year alone. But uh, it's good to see that the execution uh, continues. Yeah, I had a good chat with Pat Gelsinger yesterday, a small group of analysts. And you know, one of the, one of the things I really like about Pat is that. He's confident when he in what he's doing, but he's also okay to admit where the company's got things wrong. And you know, he talked about you know the Altera acquisition for a while because he's obviously they're spinning off the FPGA business. He basically said we got it all wrong, and now we're going to fix it and get it right. And the thing is, is there's an opportunity there. And probably it has nothing to do with the event yesterday, but I just like a CEO that can say, "This is what we did wrong, and this is how we're going to fix it." You know, Pat, there's this. I want to spend most of the time talking about the AIPC. 
because we only have so much time and I, I, and I want to dive in a little bit and even have a bit more of a discussion on, on this with you. But so the AIPC is probably one of the most hotly contested, exciting super cycle creators in the next 12 to 24 months. And yet it still seems that when you ask questions of uh, executives about the AIPC, no one can really tell you what you're going to be able to do with it yet. And I'm not saying running an LLM local. I get that. Okay. Everybody gets that. But how many tops do you need to do that? And how many LLMs are you going to need to run at the same time? And how many of the people that are going to run four LLMs at one time to do some sort of crazy, um, you know, graphic rendering with content and context and it versus the average knowledge worker that's just inferencing on Salesforce or Copilot on Microsoft. And so I know there's like this debate. And of course, in semis, Pat, by the way, this is why we built Signal 65 is because claims will need to be validated. But like, yeah. This first generation Meteor Lake AI PC that's going to, that, you know, Pat Gelsinger, so, you know, he's like, hey, you can go to B&H down the street today and buy this. Is that an AI PC? Or is 10, is a 10 top MPU an AI PC? Does it need to be over 25? Is it 50? Where does it become an AI PC? And what does this market outlook really look like? And what is the compelling killer use case that is going to drive enterprises and then consumers in droves to the store to buy an AI PC? I get that AI is cool. I get that inferencing more locally is important. Um, but I mean, and then, by the way, this was a question that was being asked in the audience. And yeah. You know, Gelsinger gave a good example when he talked about a Zoom meeting where you could be literally real time transcribing and getting action items versus, you know, right now when you use like a Zoom um, tool and it, and it gives you the summary after. But like, there aren't that many use cases yet that are really well understood. And then, the, so this point is, is like this battle for tops. What are we winning as consumers? And how much more are we willing to pay to get from 10 to 20 and 20 to 40 and 40? I'm just asking the question right now, because I also do believe that this is cool. So, you know, you have Apple and AMD, what, around 17 tops in what they've recently announced. You have... Yeah, I don't and, have it on the tip of my tongue. But I think that's about what Apple announced in their M3 announcement, the 30-minute super announcement, which, by the way, totally fit my uh, ADD. Um, I think I think Lisa mentioned 17 on the new Ryzen. And obviously, Intel's first iteration is at 10, right? I think it is. 11, 11, 11 NPU tops in uh, total, yeah. Okay, 11. Why do I have 10 in my mind? Anyway. Point is, uh, listen, I, I've been saying 10 forever. I thought it was 10, and then I got the, the official word that uh, it's 11. Uh, anyway, and, that's a trillion extra operations per second. That that does matter. <laughs> that is not, uh, you'll have to talk to Shroud. By the way, we got to bring Shroud in on these conversations sometime. We'll totally. We are. Trout, Ryan Shroud's our president of Signal 65, which is our yeah. testing, validation, benchmarking services. In case anybody needs that stuff, because you do. But, okay, so I'm going to pause here and kick this back to you. What when are we, what I think companies need to do is actually tell us at 10 and at 20 and at 40, what does the experience look like? What changes? Because otherwise Intel's in it has a huge advantage because they have a product, it's shipping in the market right now, and they have the best distribution in the world for their for their silicon. So the reason that everybody's not talking about everything openly, quite frankly, is because they want to keep it secret about those future experiences okay and that's why <clears throat> that's why isvs uh, and osvs aren't talking about it and and interestingly enough they don't want to strand and destroy the first half of sales i mean it's about as economic uh, as as that okay so and and there's still a lot of work uh, to be done the way that i like to explain explain this dan is imagine doing everything that you can do today with the cloud inside a, a certain uh, parameter model, but make it more performant. It'll be faster because you're not going up and down uh, to the cloud. It's gonna be more secure because you're not passing data up and down. And it's gonna be a lot more private. When I think about, um, there's an interesting company called Replay that uh, operates on the Mac now. It, it operates uh, in the public cloud. Okay, their cloud or whoever, whatever IaaS provider they use. Uh, but essentially, it's taking snapshots of every single thing on the screen. Okay, and think about everything on your screen, every video, every phone call, 
everything that you 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 really do uh, on your PC and uploading that to the cloud. That's going to be a hell of a lot of data. It's going to be slow. And there are some things we just don't want to share. And if you're an enterprise sharing all that data, I mean, I, I'd love to say that that Microsoft 365, more, more companies are using that than standard, uh, I'll call it uh, on-device, uh, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft 365 and Office 365, but it's not. Uh, big companies are still very reticent to share all that corporate data and send that to the cloud. And if I can do what I need to do with Microsoft 365 and not have to transmit that to Microsoft, uh, um, I, I think customers are going to like that. And, and I think we already see elements of hybrid architecture uh, with Office 365, uh, where it actually determines what's the best way uh, to do this grammar check. What's the best way to do this uh, spell check based on um, the, the quality levers of that? The industry is calling that hybrid uh, AI. It's going to take a, a while to get there, but that is the, that is the, you know, that's where the ultimate happens, where you can have your cake and eat it too, depending on, um, you know, the, your privacy settings, your security settings, and also uh, connectivity. Uh, and quite frankly, uh, compute. So long-winded answer to uh, uh, to what to, to what you asked, Dan. But uh, I think I think that that is that is my that's my answer right now. Yeah. So I, I, just because I ceded a little bit of my time, I'm going to make one comment, and then uh, we'll get on. We've got a lot of ground left to cover. But I still think there's a Intel gains a marketable advantage by the industry holding back this as a secret. Because they're getting distribution, they're getting design, they're getting into market, they're basically getting to set the tone because the users will drive. And and by the way, I still think there's a big market here. I just someone has to tell me why the number matters in terms of everyday use cases. Like I said, we've always understood workstations, I've always understood gaming, those kinds of things people have always understood about the, the power and the performance requirements. But if I'm just a knowledge worker in Salesforce and Zoom and email. And you know, telling me why a doubling tops matters is going to be valuable to make sure that you can get people. You know, otherwise it's just iPhones, iPhone 15, iPhone 16, iPhone 17, and who cares? So, anyways, all right, I see my comments. Yeah, not not to screen. I I completely agree. I just think people are keeping it secret right now. And like what we see with Meteor Lake today, um, you know. I think it's going to be important for people to look at the applications and and how the experience uh, is better. Uh, the reality is most of let's you know I'll call it um, you know if, if we're uh, using Copilot, m most of that is is right now and, and even on Meteor Lake is going to be done uh, through the cloud. 